Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Hello again, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. This is another project that I'm working on, and I'm going to put these in the vinegar while I'm doing the other two so I remember to get them all out at the same time. This is an Irwin type auger bit, and this is a Russell Jennings type. Got the double twist on it. The sharpening part is pretty much similar. The only thing really different between the two is the pilot screw, and we'll go into that when we get into the actual project. Right now, all I'm going to do is put some vinegar into the uh, soaking station and then uh, put these two drill bits in it. By putting one tip down and the other one base down, I can get two of them into one and not have to use so much vinegar. And all I really need to do is just cover them. So the more stuff I have in the tube, the less it takes to cover them because they displace the liquid. Put the cap on it, set this one back over into the cleaning station. I'm going to be cleaning some parts today and I didn't want to get my clothes all dirty. So I got out my spiffy stylish apron. And I'm wearing my black rubber gloves so I don't get all this iron crap on my hands. Head. Some drill bits sitting in some vinegar for a while. So what I'm going to do is pour off the vinegar. out the drill bits. If I don't wipe off the remaining vinegar very quickly and then put something on there to block the oxygen from getting to the surface of the bits, they'll get flash rust on them. Which is only just a surface rust, but why allow something to get on there after I've just spent all this time getting it off? Now that I got the rust off of it, maybe I can read this number here. Ah, it's a Greenlee. Made in Rockford, Illinois. This style is often called an Irwin type. This one was made by Greenlee. Single land, twin cutting edges, solid strong shank. Really a nice drill for cutting heavy stock. This is a number 20. So it's an inch and a quarter across the cutting edges. Okay, Let's see what this one is. Crescent. Jennings. It's a new name for me. I've not heard of a Crescent Jennings. This one looks like a good candidate for touching up the pilot thread with a file. This is a twin thread pilot. In other words, it has two threads running concurrently up from the base of the pilot to the tip. So when you get to the end, you actually see two threads come out at the end instead of a single spiral. comes up on one side and the other one comes up on the other side.
it confuses people because it makes it look like it's a fine thread pilot when actually it's a very coarse thread pilot there's just twice as many threads because you have a spiral that leads from this radial edge around and then they have a spiral that leads from this radial edge around and on up to the tip of the pilot. This one has some wear on the outer edges of the, of the cutting spurs These appear to be sharp and clean. I should be able to just touch this one up with a file and be very well pleased with the result. This one's going to take some work to get it done. The radial cutting edges are still pretty good and they haven't screwed up the timing on the thread. But those spurs are going to take a little bit of work and they're right close to being too low to make a, a cut. So I have to be very careful with them. So that's my next video, sharpening these two drill bits. By using this little needle file I'm able to get into the threads on the pilot. Fortunately, this one is not too badly damaged. It's a little dull, but mostly it's filled with some kind of compound, like a plastic epoxy or something. It's just a tedious process of going through and cleaning out the junk and then touching up any dubbed over threads. If they run up against a nail, it actually takes the metal in the thread and rolls it. Kind of smears it off to the side. Threads down here at the point can be in good shape and it'll start just fine. But if these threads up here near the radial cutting edge aren't in good shape, what'll happen as this pilot goes through the wood, it'll get to this point and then the thread is plugged. So that plugged thread can't engage. So it just tears out in splinters. And those splinters pop loose and get up underneath this radial cutting edge and act like a sled for that radial cutting edge to slide on so it can't dig in and cut. So as this is turning this can't advance because this shoe or this radial cutting edge with the sled underneath it is acting like a shoe and jacking this thread right out of the hole so it'll just strip that pilot thread right out. So we want to make sure that these threads are good all the way up to the radial cutting edge. And it's funny, but I find more of them with this part of the thread damaged than with the points damaged. They don't have to be razor sharp. They just have to be sharp enough to cut into the wood and form a good solid thread track so that the next thread that comes through, this one has to make a hole for that thread, that thread has to make a hole for that thread, and as it goes through this thread is gradually jacking that wood apart 
because it's acting like a wedge. So I want this thread to be able to, to cut in and engage the wood. and clear itself so that as it pulls into the wood it leaves a good crack for the next thread. This is where a lot of people get discouraged and stop. It's common saying that time is money and time once gone can never be recovered. But I find that I spend an awful lot of time just doing nothing. That has an advantage. It does let you relax and gather your thoughts. And plan for the future. But I find that I can relax and gather my thoughts and plan for the future while I'm sharpening this drill bit. Now this three-cornered file just happens to be the one that I'm using. And since it's a needle file, it's a special kind. It has one end smaller than the other and offers some advantages for die work because it's got the bend in it. It lets you get around in the corners that you can't normally get to. But you could do this with a standard three-corner file. The thread pitch is 60 degrees, just like a standard screw thread on a bolt. So I could be using a three-cornered file like this one, just as easily. To clean up the threads, it'll work just fine. I just like this one. Now this Irwin style drill bit has been sharpened a few times. Pilot thread's in good shape. You can still see that the pilot thread, as it traces down around the pilot, ends up right here at the cutting edge. Same thing on this side. Ends up right here at the cutting edge. The idea of that is so that that cutting edge leads right into that pilot thread and starts cutting away 
anything that was going to block and and break off and ride underneath that radial cutting edge. If this gets screwed up, you sharpen this. If you sharpen it on this side, it really messes it up because it not only changes the angle, it takes it away from that timing with the pilot thread so that it doesn't hit that pilot thread with the radial edge and it stops cutting right there and you end up with this short little bit just tearing the wood out. This thread comes right into there and as soon as it gets out of the thread it's cutting away that wood. So there's no problems with engagement. I'm using a safe edge file. There's no teeth on the edge of this file, so it doesn't do any cutting on the edges. Just on the flat face. So I can control what I want to cut. Now you can see the dull edge there and how much I'm changing the angle. This should be sharp enough to slice about a 30 degree, kind of like a plane blade. You want it to go in and, and slice the wood away. When it's blunt, it tends to scrape. It still cuts, but it takes a lot of pressure to do it. And it doesn't slice smoothly, so it overloads the pilot thread and causes it to strip out. Now usually if you've got a good drill bit it only takes one or two strokes of the file to get it to come out. But this one is pretty dull so I'm going to have to do quite a bit of filing on this one. Hopefully not all the ones that you're working on are going to take this much work. But the end result is what you're after. You want to have that edge right there. See how there's just a little bit of frost on the end right there? We want to have that edge sharp all the way over to the thread. a little bit more.
Now we've got it. See how that edge goes right into that pilot thread? Both sides are nice and sharp now. I've rolled up a burr on the leading edge of that, and I can take a stone and just knock that burr off. I don't want to remove a bunch of metal off the top of this, because I don't want to drop this cutting edge below that engagement with the pilot thread. Now we have the pilot thread cleaned up, and we have the radial cutting edge that's cleaned up. I'm going to take this little bit of stone and I'm just going to knock that burr off. If you're patient, you can do this whole job with a stone. You could go in there with a stone and stone that edge and hone it to a perfect keenness. but. For most of the work that a drill bit does, I think that would be wasted effort. Just knocking that burr off. Nice sharp edge on there. The thing that will make a difference in your cut you see how those side walls are kind of torn? They're not really nice and smooth. If you look at this hole, they look a lot better. This hole was done with this drill bit, and this one has fairly good edges on these spurs. That's what does the cutting on that. We'll dress up the spurs on the Crescent and Jenning and see if we can make it cut better. When I'm filing the spurs, I don't want to take anything off the top. I don't want to make them any shorter. When I'm filing the spurs, I always want to run the file this direction. And I don't want to shorten the spur. The 
the spur has to stay long enough to scribe a circle before the radial cutting edge cuts the wood. This one is just barely there enough to do the job it needs to do. If I take this spur down below that radial cutting edge, I lose the scribing effect and this cutting edge now has to try and tear that piece of wood out. It makes a much rougher hole. If these spurs aren't sharp, if that leading edge isn't sharp so that it cuts into the wood like a knife blade, then it's going to have the same effect as if I had a piece of wood caught underneath the radial edge. It's going to tend to act like a shoe and this ramp is just going to jack this pilot thread right out of the wood. So I want to have the leading edge on that sharp. I want to have the leading edge on this radial cutting edge sharp. And I want to have this thread lead right into that radial cutting edge. And I need to have this angle about 30 degrees from this surface. And this should be at the original angle that the drill bit was made at. Sharp edge here, sharp edge there, and the timing correct. The Greenlee drill bit is in much better shape than the Crescent Jennings. It's only going to take just a little bit of filing. see the shine on that edge and how it goes clear over to the screw. This side I haven't done yet. Now we have a nice smooth cutting edge there. We're maintaining the original angle. Now I'll dress the spurs. You can see the shine on the edge of the spur. On both sides. Now I'll take the stone and just dress off the little burr that I rolled up on it. I don't want to take off anything off the outside of this cutter. I don't want to change the angle of this top surface either. I just want to knock that burr off.
just want to knock the burr off the outside. Now you can see the nice sharp edge there. That's going to slice. Nice sharp edge there. That's going to slice. My angle's good. Pilot thread is in good condition. Timing is correct. This should drill a fine hole. Now that I've sharpened the radial cutting edge with the file, I want to take this stone and I just want to knock off the burr. I don't want to take anything off this steel. I just want to knock the burr off that edge. Same thing on these spurs. I don't want to take anything off the outside of it. All I want to do is just knock off that little burr that I've rolled up on there. Now I have a slicing edge. I have the radial cutting edge timed out with the thread. Same thing on this one. Spurs are sharp, radial edge is sharp. Screw threads in good condition. This one should bore a good hole. Let's give them a try. This Crescent Jennings auger bit had a problem. You could see that it was stopping and starting and pulling the thread out as I was doing that last hole. Someone had gone through and filed or damaged the outside edge of this spur and made this spur cut a smaller circle than the shank of the bit. So as soon as this spur got in there and it got down about that far, it started popping loose and I was having trouble getting it to engage. To fix that, I set the edge of the spur just like this. Now be careful of the, of the thread. You don't want to have the thread against the material that you're using. Now I'm using a piece of railroad iron, but an anvil, a block of steel, pretty much anything. This is just a square edge. It just sits up against it like that. With it laying up against it like that, I took my hammer and I tapped on the back side. And I didn't have the radial edge up against this and I didn't have the screw up against it. I only had that spur. Now, I could have set it like this and hit it, but my chances of hitting something I don't want to hit are pretty good. So by setting it like that and tapping on the outside edge of the spur, I can roll just the tip of that thing. It's kind of like setting a saw blade. All I'm doing is moving that out so it scribes a bigger hole than the shank of the bit. Having done that, 
Let's see what difference it made in the way this thing cuts. Get my pilot engaged. Now I'm not pushing down on the bit. I don't have my hand on top of it. All I'm doing is offsetting the force of my cranking on the handle. It's more awkward doing it this way, but this way I get to show you that I'm not pushing down. The auger bit's pulling itself right on through the piece of wood. Yeah, I'm sticking out the bottom. Now to avoid blowing out the bottom, I'm going to cut through from the back side. Here, the hole is torn out for the pilot, so I have to use some down pressure to get it to go through. We can see how nice and smooth a hole that is. And that's the difference between a Russell Jennings type bit and an Irwin main bore type bit. The main bore is for rough drilling. And the Jennings type bit makes a smoother cut. I'll do the same thing here. This is a number 20 bit, that means it's an inch and an eighth diameter. That's a pretty good sized hole. And that's what two sharp bits will do. The other one doesn't cut as smooth a hole, but it's a lot faster. I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Here comes the two inch auger bit that I just managed to sharpen the pilot screw on with a thread chasing file. Now the auger bit 
is pretty dull. And the best thing that I can think of at this point is get out the fixture, get out the files, and sharpen the auger bit. Well, on three quarter inch and smaller bits, even a one inch bit was okay. But you get up into the big two inch diameter ones, it's just not big enough. Now, I've come up with different ways to make this work. One of them being uh, holding it in a vise, and I've been kind of doing a, a clutch to make the process a little easier. But I gotta tell you, all these things that I'm doing are just workarounds. It's time to stop, bite the bullet, just make a fixture big enough to handle a two inch bit. I made the old fixture at 30 degrees. The new one's gonna be at 35. So I need to make my first cut here. The cutting edge on the bit should be at 30 degrees. And I wanna have a five degree relief angle on the back side of it. So I'm gonna add those two together and I came up with 35.
basic design is done, still need a clamping device. That'll be the next thing I'll work on. This video is not to be viewed by anyone under the age of 13 in the U.S. or 16 in the European Union without the express written permission of the parents or legal guardians as an underage person. Such written permission must be on file at the local government entity in charge of enforcing the rules and regulations established by the FTC. Anyone violating these terms is admitting by default that they hold harmless the owners and operators of this channel. Any and all questions should be addressed to your local branch of the FTC.